eye, perfectly representing the magic of the competition at its most dramatic. Your commentator is John Motson. The classic FA Cup concoction as the full flavour of the competition comes to York. A tight little ground with a capacity of 12,000. The locals wondering whether York City, whose side costs less than £20,000, can topple Arsenal, whose team cost over four and a half million. It's a day for dreams, and for nobody more so than 18-year-old Martin Butler, who starts only his second match in the York attack. Martin's father, Ian, was in the York side, which last met Arsenal in the Cup ten years ago. Ian's 40 now, and he's here today to see if young Martin can add to the goal he scored on his debut against Walsall in the last round. Butler, one of nine players who cost York nothing. Number nine, Keith Walwyn, 12 goals this season, cost £4,000. Number 10, Keith Houchin, top scorer with 14, cost £15,000. And at number 11, 19-year-old Alan Pearce replaces unlucky Gary Nicholson, who has a hairline fracture. Arsenal keep the side, which put seven goals past Hereford, and this is not entirely unknown territory for them, because internationals Mariner and Sansom have played here in the past for their previous clubs, Plymouth and Crystal Palace. Referee Don Shaw of Sandbach passed the pitch fit at about nine o'clock this morning. So much work done by volunteers to make this surface playable. It's taking a stud, and it's York City in red shirts and blue shorts playing from the right. And Butler, number eight, gets an early touch. Walwyn's in the centre, and it's still young Butler. Arsenal in yellow and white. That's Brian Talbot to Viv Anderson. Memories of 1955 being stirred here today when York, numbering Tottenham among their victims, marched to a semi-final replay as a third division club, which they are now. Talbot looks for Mariner. John McPhail across. Here's Anderson. Williams. McPhail was stretching a bit. Woodcock tried to turn. Talbot. And here's offside. Mariner goes for the return from Woodcock. The flag was up. Nicholas couldn't collect. McPhail. Hay. Walwyn's offside. This opening 20 minutes littered with offsides at both ends. But once you commit yourself on this pitch, you have an awful job to turn and get back. That was Hazelgrave. And then Houchin. Mistake was by Sanson. This is Butler. Peyton tried to cover, but Butler's on his way. Can he stay cool here? Ford! Ford had the shot, but all the build-up was down to the persistence of the youngest player in the side, 18-year-old Martin Butler, who latched onto Sansom's error, defied even Caton's attempt to stop him, and then set up the shot for Gary Ford. Well, there's the Arsenal bench, Don Howe wearing the cap and checking his watch, knowing that today was going to be a right old battle. Arsenal having to slug it out figuratively with the third division side. Butler laid it back to Hazelgrave and Walden's on side. Now they've got a chance short, they're piling players forward. Not a bad cross, and Pierce was there, but it wouldn't quite fall for him. That was a promising break by York, because for the first time, Walwyn beat the Arsenal offside trap. And if the ball had fallen a little bit better for Alan Pierce, York could have been in the lead. Nicholas, Talbot, Woodcock. Crowded out, but Nicholas. 
Now Woodcock again. Robson. He's got uh, Kenny Sanson coming up. Good play by the England fullback. Really good. And Mariner was waiting. And it was taken away from him at the last by Hay. A good run by Kenny Sanson, who's made goals in both matches since he returned. They're not offside this time, but Walwyn couldn't direct his header. Woodcock looking for Nicholas. Yes. A first half of precious few scoring chances. Spoiled largely for the crowd by the number of offsides. So York still haven't let in a goal in the FA Cup this season. But on the other hand, they haven't forced even a corner out of the Arsenal defence in the first 45 minutes. Well, you need a drink to keep warm in this weather. They've got a thermos flush down there. This match really a measurement of how far York City have come since Dennis Smith and Viv Busby took over here as the managerial team in 1982. There's a progressive board of directors behind the scenes at uh, Bootham Crescent, and York's crowds this season are higher on average than for 10 years. Fouled by Woodcock and McPhail. solid at the moment to Torbert. good play by Woodcock and Mariners in position too Woodcock on the chase and well collected by the young goalkeeper there was no offside flag and Woodcock with Mariners supporting him inside saw the chance to go and he went nearly all the way good piece of keeping by the 21-year-old Mick Asprey. Just wonder as the afternoon wears on whether the temperature will drop and whether the pitch might start to freeze in places. Williams. Sprazier. It's a good-looking ball. Butler. Rollins in the centre. The only one who is at the moment. Still Butler. Good chip. Oh, Anderson a fine header. Rowan half wins it back from Torda and concedes a free kick but York City there got round the back in the presence of young Martin Butler he went for the line and the chip cross was ideal it took an England piece of defending by Viv Anderson to rob Keith Walwyn of what would surely have been the opening goal Dennis Smith the manager is wearing a hat at the end of the front row there he can make himself heard from that seat, I can assure you. And Mariner up against Hay. And well stopped by Asprey. Mariner forced some daylight there in the York defence by getting away from Hay. But the goalkeeper was calm and well positioned. as far as Sansom back into Williams and Sansom stays forward this is where he could be a threat to York Butler and Walwyn on the chase Tommy Caton so the play switches rapidly from one end to the other Good play by Williams. Robson then. Only to Hay. And Walwyn through the centre. And Walwyn! And Caton! Drama here in the goal mouth. But it's 
to Madigan to Pierce. And there's a player down, it's Volwin. After he collided, I think, with Lukic. But player's gone on. Not now. Well, suddenly, Volwin saw his chance. The through ball had beaten the defence. Out came Lukic. Volwin did enough to beat him and then took a clattering. And Tommy Caton had the presence of mind to get back behind his goalkeeper and make what may prove to be a vital clearance. Anderson. And Butler, it's two against two. Still Butler. Oh, what a good effort by the 18-year-old. He really has risen to the occasion. Hasn't been overawed for one moment. And tried to do there on his own. What others have failed to do by a more circuitous route, he went straight for goal. And Woodcock. Trying to pick his way through, but uh, York so persistent in the tackle. Will win. Butler will win. Houchin in the centre. And he missed it by about a foot. Here's Pierce. Wide. They haven't got their crosses in particularly well. But when Walwyn put that ball in, it was the right ball. And Houchin harassed it through by Anderson. Didn't miss it by much. The third division team are giving it everything. And they're not far away from scoring. Ian Allenson is coming on, and the man coming off is Charlie Nicholas. It's Brazier, Ford. Now, last week at Chelsea, remember, Arsenal were caught by a very late goal.
Leicester. And the crowd here, or most of them, just can't wait for the whistle. They're poised for the greatest celebration here since 1955. Arsenal have left O'Leary up the field, hoping to break away. Rowan must surely go for the corner. Senior. And out by Robson. And would you believe it's York City's first corner of the match? Goalkeepers come for it, and there it is. York City of the third division have put out the Arsenal. A marvellous cut moment for these underdogs who waited for the time to strike. It came very late in the day, it came from a penalty. They'll argue about it. I thought Steve Williams did foul Houchin. Houchin himself scored from the spot. And it's 1955 all over again at Bootham Crescent. Then they put out Spurs and went on to the semi-final. Now they put, on, put out Arsenal and go on who knows where. A great tribute to the way Dennis Smith prepared his team. Arsenal felt they'd done the hardest part. And where their season goes from here, well, that's the Monday morning story. The Saturday night story is glory for York City. And they'll still be talking about this Saturday night story in York in 30 years' time. No one could have written a more dramatic ending to that game. It was old-fashioned Roy of the Rovers stuff, but with a touch of modern irony. The compulsion and discipline for players to get goal side of their opponents. Keith Houchin had stolen half a yard on Steve Williams, and Williams' first foul was outside the box. But the tussle persisted, and the brave referee Don Shaw, who was perfectly placed, saw the final trip and blew. Strangely, if Williams had tried less hard for his team and let Houchin go, Anderson was covering and could well have met any near post cross first. Well, that's the science, but the joy is for York City. Brave cup fighters striking a blow for all those clubs up and down the country who battle for survival and just a touch of glory and glamour once or twice in a lifetime. Well, another such club is Orient.